the parents of um, friends of mine who've got a little boy in the same class as our daughter. Um, and <laughs> Rachel messaged me and went, do you really need to listen to these guys? I didn't work to me. They're good. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I, I played, I played um, Aiden some of the stuff. And bearing in mind, the showcase was actually like the first or second gig they played as a band. And I was like, oh, okay. yeah, really? Uh, wow. <laughs> Hang on. That's, you know that's awesome. So uh, I know this is a question that's just uh, backing up a little bit, but uh, a friend of ours, and she's half of a band that's been on the show, <clears throat> she'd be Hands of Blue, because uh, she's been listening, Gina's been listening, and she wanted to know, uh, again, what quality... Um, so what quality are you talking about? really um th there's nothing specific we've got between us quite a wide taste in music to be perfectly honest um we just look for musicians that have a, a really good sound um that but also ones that go out and engage with social media that are actively gigging um that are trying to push it because although some bands are great if from, from just a promoter's point of view, it's difficult um, for me to say yes to bands when if they're not promoting themselves. From a promoter's point of view, it, it's kind of so. I'm, I'm going. I'm muddling my words slightly. <laughs> they need to do their bit in, in promoting themselves, so I can do my bit in dragging people out to see them. Is what I'm guessing at. Right. Yeah, and I think that makes perfect sense because I think if you, um, you know, you, you do see, you see it less now, but certainly in the MySpace era, um, mm -hmm. you see a lot of bands who, who very much just kind of thought, well, look, this is us, give us a record deal. Um, and that was kind of it. And I think the, the, the reality is that actually music in general, and, and certainly you know, underground and unsigned, the grassroots, whatever you call it, music is is really, really oversaturated. Anyone can make music, and that's a great thing. You, know, you can sit in your bedroom and, and, and record an album. Uh, and in fact, that's, that's when we interviewed Jux, so that's literally what he did for his first album. Um, <laughs> and that's really awesome, but you've, you've got to get out there and put your head above the parapet and say, this is who I am, if you want to do any more than that. I mean, that's really important to, to build a following, build a fan base, and any promoter now has to be able to tap into the band's fan base as well as um, you know promote it and encourage others uh, from outside and help grow that. Um, to a good gig and that's the difference between you know uh, good promoters is, is being able to leverage what the bands have got and, and choose the bands that are willing to take part and that's why we do a lot of DIY gigs uh, where we kind of you know we, we, we try and do as many as we can where there aren't uh, kind of set promoters it's kind of we find the venue and do it and work with bands that we know are just going to bring people in and have a good night and uh, I think that's a really really important thing otherwise it's you can put all the effort into the world but if you've got you know 11 bands and none of them tell anyone about it no one's going to turn up to the gig or very few <laughs> no that's there. very eloquently put Mike far better <laughs> than I did thank you <laughs> I'd do my best right <laughs> <laughs> you, sh you should hear about on Saturday nights <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> drinking water tonight it's only Tuesday <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> the Saturday after a few beers it's, uh, yeah. oh, oh man it's, it's so much it's so much fun though there, there's nothing wrong with it at all <laughs> so, uh, um, we're going to get to a few more songs here because uh, we get a few more to go. And the next up is a band called Severance, and the song is called Life on a Thread. Dig this. Deep down inside, you say prayers, but you're 
edges come and go In with the new, out with the old Take the hand that will guide you to the light Who your friends say, go your way God knows you'll make it someday Got to get it wrong, to get it right And you will find peace of mind If you search deep down inside You'll say prayers, but you're denied So you cry That was Severance with Life on a Thread. That was an awesome one. That was really kind of uh, like metalish mixed with uh, mixed with with like eighties eighties metal. It was pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Severance are a big sound, big personalities. Um, they absolutely own the stage, and um, they have a very loyal, very mobile following. Um, we we ran a little competition for the band last year. In that, the, and the, all the biggest crowd, I went up and delivered them a case of beer afterwards, and uh, everyone's uh-huh. actually won. Right on, Mike. Um, that's that's awesome. Are you running that competition again this year? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bring Good. people. Good. That, that gives us a little bit of extra motivation because we really like beer, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you get to use the beer as well. You get to choose the beer, uh, Cronenberg. Yeah. I don't care what the rest of the band says, Cronenberg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, if we win, if, 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 if. I'm yeah. surprised. 
when I asked that evidence because I, uh, I think it was Stella or something like that. And I was like, thank God. I thought you were going to ask me for some fancy Belgian beer that was going to cost me a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> nice. Um, so it all kicks off on the 29th of July. Yep. Uh, at 12.30 in Copthorne. Um, we've told people where we can uh, we can get the tickets and everything. Um, he did talk a little bit about the charities. The one thing I was going to say, actually, is that just to reiterate that the St Catherine's Hospice, um, mm-hmm. so when I when I explained to my wife um, what the festival was, I actually bought her ticket for her today, so you'll see that <laughs> go through. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> she bought a ticket, she's like, I thought you were buying one. I was like, yeah. Um, uh, but I found out actually that many years before I met her, her, her granddad was actually um, cared for by St Catherine's Hospice. Um, so it's a really, um, it, you know, become a really, uh, you know, she started talking about uh, him and things like that. We learned a lot from it. So it's a really, um, has a really emotional kind of a tie, uh, I expect, for a lot of people attending. Um, yeah. So how did you, you've obviously chosen those two charities, you did a different charity last year. Is, are you going to keep expanding that and swapping that around and keeping it you know, with different charities, do you think, or are you going to settle on some? Or I'm interested to know your kind of um, process around that, because that's a hard enough challenge that an organising band is picking who you do it for when you do a charity. Yeah, I think, to be honest, we will probably continue to do as we did this year um, and put it out to the festival supporters, because they're the people that are pitching up and paying money. They have as much right as me to choose where that money goes to. Um, because just so everyone listening understands that the the festival is run purely on the basis that once we cover costs, a hundred percent of the money raised goes to charity. Um, the bands are all currently playing for free. Um, me and Aiden don't get paid for this. And <laughs> <laughs> um, all the stallholders are paying to be there. Um, and g- genuinely, we we just want to make money for charity. Um, and get the music out there. Um, in terms of the charities, as I said, I, I feel the people paying paying into the festival have a right to choose. Personally, um, I went to when I went to Second Catherine's, I was reduced to tears myself. Um, the Aiden's pointing out, I should actually tell you, last year we we chose Cancer Research, um, which being our first year was more of my choice. Um, and when we bought our our first house some 15 years ago the guys next door um kind of adopted us um to being kind of fatherly grandfatherly figures um and they helped us out a lot with all our diy disasters like <laughs> me rocking up with a sink and going yeah i'm gonna fit a new sink and then saying to bring the tent sink back <laughs> it's a bad music <laughs> um, and me sitting on the floor with a mallet wondering why the damn laminate would not go flat and then pointing out I'd had it then up against the wall for the best part of the week that sort of thing um, both of them very sadly passed away um, from cancer um, John in particular had a very long uh, battle with cancer and was really supported um, in his in his survival fight if you like so that that's where the the charity choice last year came from um we raised 400 over 400 pound for it for cancer research last year which considering it, it was first out of the bag um and we had no idea if anyone was going to really turn up we did pretty well um this year i'm confident yeah. we're going to smash that amount and, and we have um some major funding um so a major donors doing some match funding this year. Um, so I know we will, we will have a lot more than that going to charity. This-